the United Kingdom and Japan are officially in a recession. You might have heard people talking about this, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Because now Ireland and Finland are also now in a technical recession. And then you have about a dozen or so other countries around the world that are on the verge of entering a recession. And we're just waiting on their most recent economic data to either confirm or deny if they are in a recession or not. So what I want to do in this video is go over three things. Number one, I want to go over what's going on with these countries around the world. Number two is I want to go over how this impacts you, whether or not you're in these countries. And number three is I want to go over how you can find the opportunity as these countries are going through these economic struggles and as you're seeing this changing economic landscape around the world. So let me start by talking about number one, what's going on with these countries around the world. And let me start by laying the baseline of what is a recession. A technical recession is when an economy goes through two quarters meaning six months of economic contraction, economic slowdown. And now we have data saying that the United Kingdom, Japan, Ireland, and Finland have all met this definition that their economies have been contracting for two quarters in a row. And so now they have met that technical definition of a recession. But I want to go a little bit deeper, particularly into Japan and the United Kingdom, that we can kind of see the factors that have contributed to their economic slowdowns and to see if that could be impacting you anytime in the future. So starting with Japan, this is directly from CNN Business. What it said is that domestic demand for their products was meek, weak. In other words, people inside of Japan haven't been able to continue buying more things. It said that all major domestic demand categories, including consumer spending, were negative. The only positive they saw in their economy was external demand meaning countries and people outside of Japan buying things from Japan. Now you might be wondering, why are the people in Japan struggling to buy things? Well, three main reasons. Number one is the higher prices of food. Number two is the higher prices of fuel. And number three is the higher prices of goods. And in addition to these three things, there was also a natural disaster where the sea of Japan saw an earthquake earlier in 2024. And this is where the government and leaders in Japan are saying that when you have these types of natural disasters, it makes people less interested in spending money. So you have the higher prices of things like food and energy and other things that people need. And then you have these natural disasters, which have kept people keeping the money in their pocket and not spending money, which has led to this economic contraction in Japan. Now let's contrast that with what's going on in the United Kingdom. Now again, the United Kingdom has seen two quarters of economic slowdown, but the country has been very hesitant to accepting this label of a recession. What they said, according to the Bank of England, is that this definition of a recession is, quote, unhelpful, and that the United States calculates this recession differently than the United Kingdom. And then the Bank of England went on to say that this recession is likely already over. Now, the Bank of England is the central bank in the United Kingdom. It's kind of like the Federal Reserve Bank in the United States. It's their version of that. It's their central bank. Well, the United Kingdom finance minister went on to say that high inflation is, quote, the single biggest barrier to their economic growth. Now, a big contributor to the inflation that the United Kingdom has been seeing is energy costs. And a big reason for that was the Russian invasion in Ukraine. But the inflation that the United Kingdom has been seeing has goes beyond just energy. And because of that high inflation, more and more citizens and residents in the United Kingdom have been struggling keeping up with the higher cost of housing, with the higher cost of food, with the higher cost of transportation, with the higher cost of really everything which means that people had to start cutting back on their lifestyles. And because people are cutting back on their lifestyles, they had less money to spend on discretionary items, which meant that businesses were making less money. And the reason why businesses were making less money isn't that people didn't want to spend. It was because people had to spend more money on their housing and their food. So they had less money to spend other places. And that has been contributing to this economic slowdown in the United Kingdom. Not to mention the fact that the United Kingdom has also been facing the higher interest rates which has been cooling down the economic growth because higher interest rates mean people can't borrow as much money, businesses can't borrow as much money. So it's been cooling down the spending on that front. So now let's talk about what all this means. But before I do, a quick reminder that if you are interested in staying up to date on this type of economic news, 
my team at Briefs Media puts together a daily newsletter six times a week where we break down what's happening in things like the global economy, our own economy in the United States, the stock market, the housing market, and the crypto market into a fun, witty, and easy to read email. You can read the newsletter in less than five minutes every morning and it's completely free. And I promise you're gonna love it. And if you're wondering, but just breathe, how can you promise that I'm gonna love it? Well, if you don't love it, you can unsubscribe at any time because it's completely free. So if you wanna join Market Briefs, I got the link to how you can join down in the description below. So now, let's go a little bit deeper into what does this mean? Now, naturally, when a country is going through a recession, it means that the residents in that country are going to be going through some sort of economic pain. That's generally what a recession means because the economy is slowing, businesses are making less money, people make less money, jobs kind of cool down. And so people have less money to spend well, they have less money to travel or the country has less money to buy things from other countries. That's what that generally means. But unless this country is doing trade with another country like the United States, another country is not going to be impacted by this country's recession. Now, of course, the United States does a lot of trade with Japan. They do a lot of trade with the United Kingdom. But the bigger thing that I want you to understand here, besides just the trade impact, besides just what's going on with the citizens and residents in these countries is... What caused that economic slowdown and could that happen in the United States? The big kind of common denominator between Japan's recession and the United Kingdom recession is that both governments kind of put the blame on inflation. The high inflation in these two countries made it so that more and more people living in these countries couldn't afford going out and spending money. And because of that, they had to spend more of their money on their rent, more of their money on their housing, more of their money on their food, more of their money on their necessities. So they had less spending money other places. And what we know is that in places like the United Kingdom, people also went deeper into debt. And now they're having to kind of do the opposite, where they're working now to pay down the debt because they hit that breaking point in the United Kingdom. So the thing you want to understand here is, well, in the United States, we're also facing the high inflation issues. Inflation has come down off of its highs, but we're still facing high inflation. And we're also seeing the impacts of the higher interest rates. I mean, we have higher interest rates. Mortgage rates are much more expensive today than they were two years ago. Credit card debt is much more expensive today than it was a couple of years ago. Auto loan debt is more expensive today than it was a couple of years ago. Business debt is more expensive today than it was a couple of years ago. So we're starting to see the impacts of the higher interest rates, but we haven't really felt the pain of that because, well, Lots of people still have jobs and our economy is still growing and we haven't really felt that pain yet. But now we're starting to see that other countries around the world, like the United Kingdom and Japan, are now starting to feel the impacts of this economic slowdown, of the higher inflation, of the higher interest rates. And so it's interesting here now to understand what's happening in other countries because those issues could potentially happen here in the United States as well because it's the same factors higher interest rates, and higher inflation. And this brings me now to the topic of, well, what does this mean in terms of opportunity? Well, what we do know is that more millionaires are made during recessions than any other time. But in order for you to find the opportunity in any sort of economic slowdown, you have to have a calm mind, not panic, not worry, and have a strategy. And this is where now you also wanna be able to understand how do you find opportunity? Now, the interesting thing here is that although the Japanese economy and the United Kingdom economy have been in a recession now, or are in a recession now, their stock markets haven't really been reflecting that very much. Let me just go over a couple numbers. If we take a look at the Japanese stock market, the, the Nike 225, which is an index kind of showing the Japanese stock market, year to date, between now and the beginning of 2024, the stock market is up right around 15% even though they're in a recession. And then if we take a look at the last 12 months, the Japanese stock market is up around 40%. And if you take a look at the last five years, the Japanese stock market is up around 80%. So although they have entered this technical recession, their stock market has still been very strong. Then if we take a look at the United Kingdom, the FTSE 100 index, what you'll see is that year to date, this index is flat. Not up, not down, it's just kind of sideways for 2024. For the last 12 months, the index is down 3%. And over the last five years, the index is up 7.5%. So while these economies are in a recession, their stock markets really haven't been 
hurt that much at all. Now, what does this mean? Well, it can help you understand some things that are happening in the economy because sometimes the economy and markets move in directions that are not linearly. But if you do see opportunities in markets around the world that could create investment opportunities, but I want you to understand this. Investing has risks. You're never guaranteed to make money when you invest. In fact, you will probably lose money at some point. So always your own due diligence and never blindly trust a random guy on YouTube. But when you invest your money into other markets outside of your own country, outside of the United States particularly, it's even riskier. So you want to understand that. And so now, if you're considering investing your money into markets outside of the United States, understand that that is possible and that can create opportunities, but you want to understand the risks and understand the different ways to go about doing that. Now, you could go out and invest in individual companies in different countries if you see an opportunity like that, but the alternative way that's a little bit less risky than that would be to invest in funds like an ETF or an index fund that gives you exposure to a basket of companies in that economy that you want to invest in. For example, I'm not telling you what to invest in, I'm giving you an example here. There are funds, ETFs, that will give you exposure to Japanese companies. There are funds, ETFs, that will give you exposure to United Kingdom companies. So now, if you wanted to go out and invest in one of these types of countries where you're seeing opportunity in the markets and you believe in the long-term future of that economy and you want to invest your money outside of the United States, well, now you can find funds that will give you exposure to that economy and consider investing in that. But I want you to understand that it is riskier to do that than invest your money in the United States. But if that is something that could potentially fit in your investment portfolio, that is something that you can consider if you see a good opportunity. Now, of course, we haven't really seen a stock market crash in the United Kingdom or the Japanese stock markets. But just understanding now the different ways that you can invest your money and understanding what's going on in the economy can be beneficial for you as an investor because you want to understand how our economic system works. That way you can find the opportunity, but in order for you to find the opportunity, you have to be financially educated and then you need to be prepared to be able to capitalize on opportunities that might come your way. And of course, if you want to stay up to date on what's going on, Market Briefs is a free resource for you. I have that for you down in the description. And with that, I'll see you tomorrow.